Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video about what to do when things get tricky in Git. Um, I've made a few other videos about how to use Git or why you would use Git, um, a bit about merging and stuff like that. But this is when the merges go wrong, or if you want to understand what's going on underneath in the merges or what rebases. So, uh, biggest message is don't panic. Uh, uh, normally, it's going to be okay. Um, you should always commit the code that you're working on, don't just leave it around in a working tree or it might get lost. Uh, I'm going to talk about where merges happen, uh, how to sort of visualize what's going on, what a merge is, and in particular the difference between a merge and a rebase, how to find stuff that looks like it's been lost. Um, you can normally get it back. Okay, so first message is don't panic. Uh, it's really quite hard to lose uh, your work in Git, especially if it's, it's a commit that's been uh, committed um, even if you kind of lose a reference to it so you can't see it anymore um, it's still there underneath until until git garbage collects it which takes ages or it takes it doesn't happen for weeks and weeks unless you explicitly tell it to do a git gc um, but commits can disappear so you can't find them anymore uh, but don't panic we can get them back and I'll talk a bit about how to do that at the end so big message um, before you start doing anything complicated or tricky make sure you commit your code even if it's not ready to be sent to anyone else yet or it's not complete even if it doesn't compile um, you can still make it into a commit um, and put it on a local branch in your local repository no one else will see it you can throw away the branch when you're done with it you can redo the commit so that um, it's not all messy but just um, just just store it somewhere keep it safe do a commit uh, put it on a branch and then you can switch back to the master branch and, and do the merge if you don't do a commit uh, your your code can get lost, although Git does try and look after you in that case as well. Okay, so um, let's do a Git status and find out where we are. Well, we're editing our code, uh, which is a bunch a list of um, sayings. We've got some changes that we're making to a file called northern.txt and a file called southern.txt, which contains um, sayings from those regions of the UK. Um, and we've made a couple of new files, a uh, Brummy file and a Welsh file. So, um, but we're not happy with those changes. We don't really want to commit them and push them anywhere. Um, but still, um, what we'll do is we'll put them onto a, a temporary branch just for now to get them out of the way so we can do our merging. So if you do git checkout minus b and then give the name of your branch, that creates a branch. Uh, we're calling our branch unfinished dash edits. Um, and yes, you can do that even when your working tree has got stuff in it. Um, Git's fine to make you a new branch in that situation and, and it does keep the the new files um, even though the message that comes from that checkout minus b command doesn't mention them they are still there if you do a git status you can see we're in exactly the same position we were in before except now we're on a branch called unfinished edits instead of being on the master branch so now we're on that branch we can we can commit onto it um, and and our stuff will be stored nicely out of the way uh, until we're ready to do to merge it in with the, the new stuff. So we do a git add dot to uh, put everything in the cache or the index and then we do a git commit and that makes a commit and it's made the commit on that branch called unfinished edits. So now we can do a git branch and see where we are. We can see that we've got a master branch, a couple of other branches and then we've got this branch called unfinished edits which is the one we're on at the moment which is why the stars next to it. So if we do a git checkout master that puts us back onto the master branch. And if you do an ls now, you see those changes that you were working on that we committed into unfinished edits are now gone. Um, they're still there in unfinished edits for when we're ready for them, but they're gone from your working tree because you've gone back to the master branch which doesn't have that commit on it. Um, and your working tree is now completely in line with uh, what's on the master branch. So those, that brummy.txt file doesn't exist anymore. You can still get it when you need it. So, the uh, first important point to clarify about merging and rebasing, all of that stuff happens on your local machine. So, um, you, when you pull stuff that clashes with what you're doing, um, you merge with it there. What, what can't happen, you can't, what you can't do is push your stuff and then have it get merged somewhere else. So, if you do a git push like we're doing here, um, and you're trying to push to a, a remote repository that has stuff that clashes with what you're doing, um, it will refuse to do it um, and you have to do that merging here on this local computer 
So let's have a look at this diagram. This is an illustration of a, a situation. So I, um, it's me on the right and then someone I'm working with called Pete on the left. And in the middle is the shared repository that we're both wanting to push to. So um, we're both we're sharing one remote repository and we're both pushing to it, which means that sometimes we're going to get told you can't push to it because uh, someone else has already pushed. So each of these blobs on the on the screen here is a repository. Um, Pete's got a clone of the shared repository on his machine. I've got a clone of the shared repository on my machine, and the shared repository is somewhere else that we can both talk to. So um, the square the squares are um, commits in these repositories. So you can see that all three of the repositories agree on three commits called C1, C2, C3. Now a commit, remember, is a, the complete state of the code at any given moment. It's not a diff um, between anything and anything. It's a representation in a very efficient way inside Git of the complete state of your code at that moment or your working tree at that moment. So. Um, and what's more, it also is a representation not just of the state of your code, but also the complete history of commits um, that led up to that point. So you can see that um, Pete, Shed, and I all agree on what happened in C1, C2, and C3. But then after that, Pete has done some changes, called, we're calling P1 and P, P uh, sorry, P4 and P5. Uh, and I've done some changes, we're calling A4, A5, and A6. And uh, None of those changes are yet in the shared repository. So the first thing that's going to happen is that Pete is going to do a push. And he pushes his changes, and there's no conflict there. Uh, shared is quite happy to re receive extra commits that go on top of what it's already got. So um, Pete can push to the shared repository. And uh, then when I do a pull, what I'm going to do actually is a fetch, which means go and get the stuff that's um, on the remote repository and just keep a record of it locally and then a merge which means uh, merge it in uh, which I'll explain in a bit so if we just look at the fetch part if I do a git fetch or, or the first part of a git pull which does a git fetch um, it, it goes and gets that code those commits that have been committed into shared and it, it, it just copies them over to my local repository and it copies them into a branch called uh, remote slash master or the master branch of the remote um, uh, sorry, it copies that onto a branch called origin slash master because the, the this shared repository is called origin to me because it's the place where I cloned from. So it copies it into a, a remote called origin slash master, or rather the master branch of the remote called origin, and uh, uh, it copies it in. But it, there's no merging happened yet. It's just brought the commits in and it knows about them now. And that's what remote branches are for, to just know about what's going on on a remote repository. And then after it's done that fetch, you then need to do a merge in order to um, end up with your working tree containing the changes from P4 and P5 and the changes from A4, A5 and A6. So what, when you do a merge, what you do is you make a new commit in your repository, which represents all the changes that happened on both paths that we can take um, from C3 up to M. So M is, is a brand new commit that represents the kind of bringing together of the changes that happened on one side and on the other side. That's what a merge is. Um, the other possibility is a rebase, which is quite different. What a rebase does is it takes P4 and P5 exactly as they are, and it creates a new version of A4 that goes on top of P5 and a new version of A5 on top of that and so on. So I've called them A4- A5- and A6- So what they are is changing history changing what everyone else is going to see happen. So instead of the true picture which is that actually you worked on A4 I worked on A4, A5 and A6 while Pete was simultaneously or you know effectively simultaneously working on P4 and P5 we didn't know about each other's changes what I'm doing is kind of changing history to make it look like actually Pete did his work first and then I did mine later. Um, so you can see that that makes it look simpler, but in a way it makes it look simpler, but the, the trade-off is that it actually is more complicated. So in the case of a merge, uh, that's the, that, that picture there is, is the situation when everything's finished. 
And when I do a push, all of that information will go on to shared. All the A4, A5 and A6 unmodified will go on to shared. And then the, also M will go on to shared and everyone will be able to see what happened and how we got to M, which was by trying to merge together the state in P5 and in A6. Whereas, if I've done a rebase, it makes it look like I my work happened later, uh, which is all fine. Uh, in fact, it's simpler for other people to understand, so long as I get it right. But if I get A4, A5 and A6 wrong, or A4 dashed and so on wrong, um, there's no real record of what I really did, and the mistake that I made during rebasing just kind of gets uh, solidified into the repository. So, um, when you get to a tricky merge, don't just sort of blunder around um, clicking buttons and typing things until until the error messages go away. You really need to just stop and think about where you want to get to and what's happened, uh, which you can do by just visualizing it, which I'll show you, um, and then work out where you need to get to. So if you do a git pull and you get this, you get a situation like this where um, it's done the fetch okay, which is the first bit, and then it says auto merging pirate.txt, and there's some kind of conflict going on. Um, don't panic, don't just try and make it go away. Try and understand what's gone on and uh, end up with the correct merge commit at the end of it. So, first of all, don't panic. Uh, nothing's broken, nothing that you've done is lost. Uh, everything is exactly as it was before, so long as you committed. So, if you do a git k and then a minus minus all, it will show you a diagram everything that's going on. And if we look at this diagram starting at the bottom and working gradually upwards, we'll be able to understand what it's saying. So first of all, we've got that, that line that says added a foo, which is that um, the first commit. And basically, that's a commit that, that's before any of this stuff happened. Um, it's just the place where we're starting from before uh, all this branching off happened. Uh, and then the next line up is this branch called unfinished edits, which has one commit on it called changes and new regions which is the branch that we made just to store our stuff that we're not completely happy with but we wanted it out of the way so we can ignore that branch for a while then the next three lines go up and they end up in remote slash origin slash master and that's the um, the remote uh, that I was talking about called origin and its branch the branch of, that of origin is called master so basically the person uh, on the remote someone has pushed some changes those three changes and they happened, they've happened in uh, in origin, uh, and we haven't yet got them in our own master. If we look at our own master, we can see that's the line above. We can see it's only got the one commit in it, which is this barrel-related pirate saying. So our master has got one change, and the remote master has got three changes um, that sort of branch off from each other. Then if you look at the next two lines above that, that's basically. Uh, the local changes stuff, that's basically Git saying uh, 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 we've got some stuff changed and the reason why there's some stuff changed is because it's in the middle of a merge which it, it wasn't able to do automatically so it's asking us about it. So if you get worried, if everything's messed up and you don't know what's going on uh, in the middle of a merge, just say git merge minus minus abort. If you do that, then, you can do, uh, then basically everything gets put back to how it was before it even started trying to merge. So you haven't lost everything, except the merging that you were doing if you were doing some. And then if you say git status, you can see you're still on the master branch, and it's now telling you things have got a bit tricky. Basically, just like I was saying a second ago, on your master there's been one commit, and then on the remote master, on this origins master, there are three commits, and they, they, they both branch off from the same commit uh, that came before that. Um, so something needs to be done to resolve them. So once we've done that git merge minus minus abort, we can do a git k minus minus all again, and we get pretty much exactly the same picture as we had before, except those top two lines that we saw saying stuff was changed in our local tree have gone away, and that's because we did the git merge minus minus abort, which just throws away that stuff, gets us back to a clean state where we've got master and we've got uh, origin master, which are branching off from each other, and we need to do something to merge them back together. Okay, so what you need to do is go through the commits that are listed in Git K and click on them and you'll see the diffs for them. You need to understand um, what each commit was trying to do and how that's going to conflict with other commits if it is. And once you've done, uh, once you've gone through that and understood it, it should be fairly clear to know 
uh, what you want to end up with and then then you just need to find out the best way to get there which could be a merge in one direction or possibly a merge in the other direction or a rebase in one direction or the other direction so here are your main choices uh, just repeating for you you can either do a merge or a rebase you can either make a new commit which is a merge commit which which reflects the uh, the merging of those two pieces of work or you can change the second piece of work so that it looks like it happened after the first piece of work um, so let's do a merge um, the advantage of merge is that it preserves what really happened the disadvantage of merge is you have this horrible merge commit which is quite hard to understand um, so we'll switch on to the master branch and then if we do git merge origin slash master that's basically doing exactly the same as what git pull does git pull does a git fetch and then it does this git merge like this so we're doing that manually because the fetch has already happened so we say git merge origin slash master which basically means uh, try and merge my master with this remote master and it says sometimes that will just work and it'll be fine it'll make the uh, merge commit for you um, in this case there's a conflict so it's not quite ready to uh, we can't, can't finish off the merge commit yet uh, when I say merge commit I mean that thing that, that, that I've called M on the diagram this new commit it represents the merging so if we do a git merge tool um, that will open up a graphical div tool for us if we've got that set up I use kdiv3 which I, I really recommend it's really good and that will um, allow us to merge in the changes um, between the, the, the two things that have happened uh, which doesn't always work so uh, if you if you want to visualize as I said you can look in git k look at the branches that are um, that you can see have happened and you can click on each commit and you can see uh, what happened in that commit um, this is showing you basically how to do that on the command line so if you do a git log and you and you give the ID of a commit that was before all of this started so that's what that 40127FE is that's uh, a commit before we all started and then dot dot and then master which basically means where we are now so basically show me everything that happened between before before all of this and master uh, and we can see there's only one commit in that in that list uh, only one thing happened so we do a git show on that commit and it shows us that we added a saying uh, roll out the barrel to pirates.txt and then we can look at what happened in the other side by saying git log and then that same ID number for something before all of this and then dot dot and then origin slash master which means tell me what happened between that time before everything happened and what and the uh, the latest thing on the uh, remote repository which is what this origin slash master represents uh, and it says there's three commits that have gone in we can do a git show for each of them and if you look at the bottom two you can see that actually git show pirate uh, with the id and then pirate.txt which means show me everything that this commit did to this file basically no, they didn't do anything to pirate.txt the last two lines so only, we're only bothered about this one commit and what that commit did rather annoyingly and difficult to mergely is it changed all the spaces in that file into tabs which is why we're having trouble merging because that affects almost all of the lines of all of the files so that's what happened so if we do a git merge tool um, it, it opens up kdiv3 or whatever and and in this case with this merge uh, when it opened kdiv3 kdiv3 immediately closed again and said I've already I've already resolved all of the merging that you need to do um, I didn't even see it and it just said oh yeah it's all fine and uh, whilst that normally works and is great in this particular case it didn't actually work because I threw quite a nasty merge at it so let's have a look what's happened so after git k exited saying oh that's all fine I've done that for you we can now do a git status and we can see what um, what state our working tree is in and basically where we are is that um, uh, the our merge commit is almost ready to commit but it hasn't actually been committed yet we can have a look at it and check that it's okay Notice also that there's a dot or there's a pirate.txt dot orange file that was created that just is just a record of what um what pirate.txt looked like before we started messing about, just in case that's helpful. So we won't uh, check that in or um, deliver that because that's just a temporary file. But then the rest of the files show that there are changes uh, this merge commit has changes to um, those four files. So um, we can ask what changes are you making? 
Um, so we can say git diff minus minus cache uh, pirate.txt, which means tell me what you've got in the index uh, as changes for pirate.txt. And you can see that the um, the we're getting a diff, which is showing us what the merge commit, what changes the merge commit makes, uh, versus one of the two um, paths that were taken. So basically, if you remember that M box, that merge commit, it had two lines coming out of the bottom, which basically, in the Git terminology, that means it has two parents. Um, uh, and that just means there are sort of two things that kind of both go before it in history. So it's a merge. So it's basically saying, take these two things that happened before me in history, and the outcome of merging them is this. Uh, so this diff is showing us one of those two lines. The line showing us the line from the um, the the branch that already had roll out the barrel added into this file. Uh, as you can see, there's no change in roll out the barrel because it's just there. It's already been added. And then the diff is that it's it's adding um, it's changing spaces to tabs on those other lines, and you can see now why this change is uh, was quite a nasty one to merge because really it's kind of in truth the correct change that needs to happen here is that roll out the barrel needs also to have tabs instead of spaces uh, to be consistent with that change that, that changed all the spaces uh, into tabs, but um, that when I added roll out the barrel I wasn't even aware that the, this change from spaces to tabs had happened so. Um, this is some genuine work that needs to be done inside the merge commit to kind of reflect what what would have happened uh, if roll out the barrel had been around when the change from spaces to tabs was implemented. Okay, so um, just to confirm that, if we write out the con just the contents of pirate.txt, you can see it's got a couple of lines with tabs in it, and then it's got roll out the barrel with still spaces in it. So this merge is actually not what we want. Uh, so just a reminder what we're doing. We've um, got all these changes with these two two um, sort of histories, um, P4 and P5, or A4, A5, and A6. And what we're doing is making a new commit called M, which is the process uh, which kind of represents um, the outcome of uh, mixing together changes from both sides. So in this case, mixing together changes from both sides means that we need to edit pirate.txt to make sure that roll out the barrel also has tabs and not spaces. Um, and then finally, our, um, our merge commit is going to be ready. We're going to do a git add to put pirate.txt into the index again, because now we've edited it and it's ready. If we do a git status, we can now see that um, those files are all modified and ready to be committed. And we can do a git, uh, a git diff minus minus cache just to check that they look right now. And when we do our git commit, uh, git gives us a message to describe our merge, which we can either change or not change. And we've committed a new commit, which is the merge commit. Now we've made a merge commit, we can do a git push. And uh, the, uh, the, the, co uh, the, the, new commits, the new commit that we've made, M, and those other commits, A4, A5, and A6, will all get pushed. Um, up, up to the um, up to that shared uh, uh, shared repository or the, or the origin as we're calling it when we're on our local machine, um, and they won't object to that because all we're doing is pushing new commits. We're pushing the um, the changes uh, that were previously on my machine and that and then that M, which is the merge commit, which um, brings them together. And we're not overwriting or changing history of any commits that are already there. We're just adding extra ones on top. So it's perfectly fine to push that. Uh, so that's what merging is. It's making a new commit that goes after everything else. So now let's talk about what rebasing is. Rebasing um, is basically changing history to make it look like the stuff that you're working on comes after the stuff that's already been pushed. So the way you do a rebase is you switch onto the branch that you want to change. You want to change its history so it looks like it comes later. And then you say git rebase and you name the branch that you want your stuff to come after. So let's do that. Let's do it with the um, the branch called unfinished edits that we made, uh, just to hold on to stuff that we were working on at the time. So we do a git checkout unfinished edits, which switches us onto that branch, which is called unfinished edits. And then we say git rebase master, which means make my stuff that, that's on this um, branch called unfinished edits look like it happened uh, after everything on master. So git works away, and often it um, it successfully does this rebase 
uh, without you having to look at it. So remember that a commit is not um, it's not a diff. It's a the state of the code at a particular moment. Um, but in order to do this rebasing, uh, Git has to find the diffs and then try and apply them one by one and make the changes that you made, those diffs, um, fit on top of code that's actually changed underneath it or may have changed underneath it. So that's what it's doing and it has all different try, different ways of um, trying to apply diffs in, in different orders and so on to get it to apply cleanly. Um, but that's fundamentally what it's doing. It's making new commits that look a bit like your old commits but are on top of different code and may actually be quite different and it may need your help to make those commits. So again, if it says um, uh, I couldn't merge, don't panic. Don't just do anything to get it to work. Um, if it all goes wrong, you don't understand what's going on, just say git rebase minus minus abort and it will throw away all of that rebasing work that you've done. Um, so if you've helped it modify a couple of, of those commits and then it all goes pear shaped on the third one, you say git rebase minus minus abort, it just throws all of that away and goes back to the state of uh, the world before you started rebasing anything. So you can you could then go on to do a merge or do the rebase again or whatever you like. And if you do a git k minus minus all, um, you'll be able to see all the branches, visualize it exactly the same way I was saying about merges. Click on those commits, work out what happened, work out which branch is which, um, and therefore where you want to get to, and then you, you know, it will guide you through the rebasing process. So once you're ready, you can you can start the rebase again by just saying git rebase master again. It says, oh, there are conflicts. And just a reminder what we're doing. Uh, we've got these commits all the way up to P5, which have been pushed um, by Pete. And then we want to create new commits on top called A4, A5, A6. Dashed. These new commits look a bit like A4, A5, and A6, but now they're, they're being applied on top of P5 instead of happening in a world where they didn't even know P5 existed. So again, we can have a look at what, um, what we did and what they did. And you can do that in Git K by just clicking on the commit. We can do it on the command line. You can say git log uh, and then the ID of something before all of this stuff and then the name of the, the, the branch where we are, which is unfinished edits, and it will show us what happened. In this case, there's only one change that's happened. So we can do... So that shows what, what happened in the past. And of course, we, you know, when we're rebasing, the past isn't going to be exactly the same as the present, which is the difference from merge. So we want to make a new commit to replace the commit that's on unfinished edits. Um, we put a commit that applies cleanly, or, or is the is the application of the of the change we made to make that commit on top of the new changed code? Anyway, if we do a git show on that commit uh, and ask what changed in northern.txt in that commit, we can see that we added an apostrophe before the e there. Um, we can also do similarly. We can see what happened in the um, in the other people's uh, commits. And then when we're ready and we know what we want the file to look like, we can say git merge tool. And that will open up a program like kdiff3 or something similar. In the top left, you've got the um, code as it was originally before all this started. And then in the top middle, you've got what they did, which, by the way, is two things. They, um, they changed tabs to spaces and they reversed the case of everything. Um, and then in the top right you can see what we did, which was add an apostrophe. So we can now work out what we want to have in the bottom. So in the bottom is where um, what this file is actually going to end up looking like. Um, we basically want something that looks like the thing from the, the line from the top middle, the Bayek pet with the capitals, but we want to add um, an apostrophe before the E, at least I'm assuming that's what we want. Anyway, once we've resolved all the conflicts in this file, we click save and, and when we exit, kdiff3 will basically tell git, yes I did the merge and all is good, so git will immediately then uh, add it into the index. So if we do a git status, it says I'm in the middle of rebasing and, and I'm, doing a, I'm doing one of the commits in my rebase, which is the, the editing of these commits to make it look like they happen later. Uh, and the the commit that I'm in the process of doing at the moment looks like this with these new files and these modified files um, and we could do a git diff minus minus cache to see what's changed and in this case there isn't an ambiguity about what the parent is because the whole point of rebase is that you only end up with one parent and a nice simple history 
So that git diff minus minus cache will show us what we're about to do uh, and help us judge is this the new thing we're about to do approximately similar to the original thing that we did uh, when we first committed this. When we're happy we can say git rebase minus minus continue and it will um, it will apply that commit and it will keep going um, um, trying to apply the diffs on top and make new commits. Hmm. Excuse me. Um, until uh, until all of your um, changes that were different on the branch you're on have been redone on top of that other branch, and it, and your branch will now be pointing at the the changed history. So that's all very well, but actually in the unfinished edits branch we were um, we weren't uh, we didn't want to push or something like. So what you would normally do is you'd rebase. Um, and then you would push your rebased stuff or, or just keep rebasing for days and days until you feel ready. Um, but we were in the middle of a commit. We only committed just to make our stuff safe. So now I want to show you how we um, get it back into the working tree and stop it from being a kind of permanent commit. So what we type in is git reset head and then a caray symbol. So reset means basically consider the following thing to be the kind of now moment. And head caray means basically now minus one so go back one commit basically and consider yourself to be consider now to be basically one commit before um, what you considered now to be a minute ago but importantly don't change the working tree to look like that leave the working tree exactly as it is so what that means is that we've git's gone back to um, one one commit earlier i.e. it's sort of undone uh, the commit that we were working on that we committed uh, but it hasn't actually changed our working tree, it's only changed what it considers to be uh, the head of code. So if we then do a git status, we get rid of the dot orange files and do a git status, we can see we're exactly back in the state we were originally, where we've got um, changes in our working tree, um, uh, and they're not committed yet. So um, we're all ready to just carry on working on that commit, and we can commit it onto whichever branch we want to commit it now. Okay, so that was merging and rebasing and uh, undoing a commit and carrying on with it. Um, the other things that we can do, the other thing that we can do that's really useful is what I mentioned earlier on, which is that if we've um, somehow lost a commit, especially if we were rebasing, we've ended up with a rebase that went wrong and we think that we should probably go back to how things were before the rebase. But if we've finished off the rebase, we can't do git rebase minus minus abort. What we can do is go and find the original commits. Uh, and sort of resurrect them. So they're still there. Well, every time you do a commit, it gets saved into the kind of Git storage area, and it's still there uh, unless it gets garbage collected, even if it's not visible anymore to you because there's no branch that mentions it or has it in its history. And what you can do is do a Git ref log, which prints out all the uh, commits that have been around that you've been working with recently, um, and then we, we're just going to grep it for something that we know is in the description of the of the commit that we're interested in. We can see there's two. There's one that's kind of after the rebase, uh, which is the bad one that we don't want. And then there's one that's from before the rebase, which is still around. So that's all good. So we get that ID number from the very far left of that bottom row. Um, and we can just say git checkout and then that ID number. Basically what that means is it tells git to go and uh, change the state of everything to be the exact state of that commit that, um, that, that was committed, even though there's no branch. Um, there is a commit, and we can say just go and be be on that commit. And it does warn you, it says you're in a weird situation here because you're not on a branch. There's no branch that points at uh, the commit that you're on. Um, you just went and got a random commit from history, um, and you're looking at how the code was at that moment. So we can fix that problem very easily by just saying git checkout minus b and then the name of a branch. And that means create a branch with this name, and I called it few because it's sort of rescuing us. Um, uh, and now suddenly we're not in a detached head state anymore because we're on a branch, a branch called few and that branch reflects the um, the, uh, um, the state of everything up to and including that commit that we named so uh, we, we effectively we can sort of undo a rebase by just making this branch in this way and throwing away the branch that uh, has the rebase on it and then trying to do it again or do a merge or something else so the don't panic message again applies. The, um, you can get things back into a reasonable state. So remember, uh, always remember, commits are a state of the code, not a diff. So you shouldn't think of a commit as being a diff from what happened last time, because sometimes 
uh, commits could have multiple divs from the last time because the last time is more than one thing. So uh, a commit is not a diff. A commit is a, uh, an exact state of the code, including all of the history that led up to that point. And hopefully that makes things a little bit clearer about how things work in Git and how to uh, sort things out. Please do leave comments if you have any questions uh, or if there's any other topics that you would like me to cover. Uh, if you would like to donate a little bit of money every time I make a video, please go to patreon.com slash andybalem. If you would like to play my new Android game, it's called Rabbit Escape. Uh, it's not only for Android, but it's on, uh, on the Play Store for 60p, or you can download it free from my website if you'd rather not pay the 60p. Um, search for Rabbit Escape on the Play Store and click the orange button, or find one of my YouTube videos about Rabbit Escape that I've been making many of recently. Uh, you can find all my videos at, uh, under the user AJ Balam on the uh, on YouTube. Uh, follow me on Twitter for sort of random things, links to my blog posts, links to uh, videos. Follow my blog where I talk about programming related stuff and link to my videos. And um, have a look at artificialworlds.net for my open source projects, uh, my film podcast that I do with a friend of mine, uh, and all this other stuff. And see you next time.